imagine a teenage girl. She has just fallen in love. Or that's what she says, you know, how it's with teenagers, you can't really believe them. So she's just fallen in love a few days ago when she realized that the guy she was having crush on had sent her a friend request on Facebook. That's how romance begins these days, isn't it? Um, and it's a beautiful feeling, you know, figuring out that the person you have, you're having crush on is actually interested in you. So she's sitting there texting this guy and the conversations don't seem to end. The texts continue for hours. Even the goodbyes, they take many, many hours to finish. One person says, you know, you go first. The other person replies, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not sleeping tonight. So that's how this teenage romance is growing. But here comes the twist. I won't go into the details of the content, what they are talking about. You understand that, isn't it? So um, here comes the twist. The father of that girl finds out and catches her. <laughs> Sounds relatable from that laugh from there. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, now, imagine that picture. Girl sitting over here, and the father right next to her. He knows everything now. And it's quite easy to imagine it from here rather than being the girl in that situation, isn't it? So just, just imagine that picture for a moment and think about the possibilities. What could happen next? I'll, I'll tell you two distinct possibilities, probably from, you know, at the two extremes. So in one possibility, father comes over, he's very furious, very angry, he snatches her phone, smashes it against the wall and gets mad. He's really mad. He then beats her. Okay, so that's one possibility. Um, there is a silence from that side, so I think that's also relatable. <laughs> um, let's see the other possibility, the other extreme of the possibility. The father tries to have a reasonable conversation with her. He says, Listen, girl, I know you're going through a difficult time. It's teenage. And I have been through this teenage years. Your mother has been through these years. And we know, we know for sure it's a difficult time for you. People are not going to understand you. Everything you're experiencing at this moment is probably the first emotion you're going to encounter in your life. And it brings in a lot of trouble. I just want to tell you that I'm here with you. And you don't have to hide anything. And if you can't share it with me, you can always share it with your mother or somebody else. But you don't have to keep things to yourself. We trust you. We're always going to be with you. Now, we saw these two possibilities. And you don't need a degree in philosophy to figure out which possibility is a better option, right? These are the moments, these are the challenges we encounter in our daily lives. And in these crucial times, in these crucial moments, our ability or inability to have a conversation decides our fate. Unfortunately, a lot of Indian parents, uh, they go by the former approach. They think, I, I, in fact, I've heard quite a few parents, they're saying, you know, my child was doing a mischief and I really beat that child. And I can tell you, I can promise you, he's not going to repeat that again. And I, I just keep telling those parents, no, this kid is doing the same thing, just not in front of you. Right? Uh, if we are unable to engage in conversations, this is what happens. Things keep on happening. They are not happening in front of us. Okay? So this is, this is what I want my audience to understand. Whoever you are, are you a student, you are a child, you are a parent, you are a teacher, or anybody. If, if we can engage in conversations during difficult times, that determines a lot of things. I told you about this one example, but you can certainly think of, think of many other examples. You can think of a job interview. You're sitting over there, you're competing with people who have similar skill sets, almost similar skill sets. The things you know, they also know. 
But there's a difference. When, when the interview is going to come and then ask you that cliche question, tell me about yourself. Right? You must have heard, those of you, you who have faced interviews, this is, this is the question you get. And the moment you start speaking about yourself and how you engage in a conversation, that alone is going to determine whether you're going to get that job or not. Right? Or think about a date. If you're going on a date, your date is sitting right next to you across the table, and then you're looking into each other's eyes, and then she asks you, tell me about yourself. And if at that moment what you are saying is, is relevant, it's interesting, then you might have a chance, right? Otherwise, you can, you can see what's going to happen. So, so my point is, conversations matter. When, when we are young, when we are students, we are often told, and, and also the given the kind of system, the kind of examinations we go through, we are constantly told that individual brilliance is all that matters. That individually you have to be good at something, you have to top the exam, you have to come first. But that's something I want to tell you, especially to the young kids. Individual brilliance means nothing if you cannot coordinate with other people. And how can you coordinate with other people? With conversations, language is all we have. We don't have anything else, we don't have any other option. And think about this, this is what basically differentiates us from animals. Have you, have you ever seen a conference like this for dogs? Speakers or listeners or anybody like just coming together, deciding something that you know we are going to attack today in that colony, combined. You know what that will do? Yes? So that's the power of combining your collective approach. Right? So individually, we can be brilliant. But as long as we are not communicating with others, as long as we are not working with other people, it doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't mean a thing. And you have seen the consequences, what happens when you are unable to have a conversation. A child gets beaten and a person loses a job. Wars happen. When nations fail to talk, you get into wars. So, it's quite clear that whether we have conversations and the good ones or we are not able to have conversations, that determines a lot of things for us. And especially in 21st century where, where you will see almost anything you can do. You can play chess, you can, you can work on computers, you can design software. Almost anything you can do, a computer will do better than you. And if you are not good at conversations, you are lagging behind. <coughs> Uh, so there's, there's, there are two aspects that I want to talk about when it comes to conversation. The first idea is just to have a conversation. And it might sound quite weird, we all have conversation, but I don't think so. We don't. We talk a lot, but we don't have conversations. We don't, we don't engage in good conversations. And in order to understand how to have a conversation, we first must, under, we first must understand how not to have a conversation. And how not to have a conversation is to watch a TV debate. Have you watched them all? TV debates? Two people shouting at each other, yelling, nobody listening to each other. So there, that gives you a picture how not to have a conversation. If you are not willing to listen, if you are not willing to understand the other person, you are not going to have a good conversation. And this is especially relevant to parents and teachers and people who have, you know, you are not, who are not teenagers at least, who have grown up. You must understand the power of listening. When we listen, and listening I don't mean hearing, listening means what you hear, you understand that, you interpret that, you question. Right? When we, when we are students, we think we are questioning, we are, we are wasting our teacher's time, it's probably my teacher would mind if I'm questioning. No, no. People like it when you question them. You have to be interested in them. The moment you are interested in somebody, anybody, your interviewer, your teacher, your parent, your date, the moment you are interested in that person, you are listening, you are paying close attention, the person is going to be impressed. They are going to be fond of you. Nobody minds being listened to. That's the highest kind of respect you can give to a person. When somebody walks in, you can stand up, you can give them, you can fold your hands, you can give them respect, but if you're not listening to them, you're not giving them the due respect. 
you have to listen to them. So uh, now that I have made you a good listener, made you a good listener, you're listening to me quietly. So I talk about the second aspect of it, which is the quality of conversation. Let's just go back to the same girl I was talking about earlier in the conversation. The same girl, the issue is resolved with her, her father. She is having summer vacations. She is enjoying at home. She read about black holes in, her, in the news channels and everywhere in the media. Black holes are fascinating things. This was the first time we actually saw a picture of black hole. How does it look like? It all, you know, everybody predicted it. We didn't know how it looked like. There were only theories. She's, she's into physics and she's fascinated by the idea of black holes. All she had thought about during the summer vacations is black holes. And she can't wait to go out there in the classroom and talk to her friends about this. Talk to her physics teacher about this. But here's what happens. The moment vacations end, school begins, she enters the classroom and here's what she hears from the classmates. That her skirt length is not appropriate. That she has probably gained a lot of weight. That skin is not nice. There are hair on the body. We, as a group, as collective species, we determine our fate with the kind of conversations we have. In our group, the kind of conversations we engage in, if we are gossiping, if we are, if we are just talking about uh, silly stuff, that's what we are going to become. And if we are talking about some kind of quality stuff, then we are going in that direction. So as a group, it becomes extremely important for everybody to ensure we are, we are having that kind of good quality conversations. It's not easy again. It can be difficult at times, especially, especially when you're dealing with teenagers, when you're dealing with young children, they can be annoying. I'm sure even teenagers would agree you, you can be annoying at times. And it's not easy to deal with you. But as mature people, this is something we need to do. So these two things combine. First, to have a conversation no matter what. At whatever cost, we have to have a conversation. We have to engage in a conversation. The second idea, that the quality of conversation should be ensured. We need to make sure we talk about interesting things which can help our kids lead a good life. We can talk about science, technology, we can talk about history, all the fascinating things. So these two things com combine they can change our life just with a conversation. And that's all we have. The conversations are all we have. If we don't have a conversation, we are going to use the force against our child, against our friend, enemy, anybody. This is especially important, important in the world we live in, which is for all the more connected than before. We can sit here and talk to somebody who's sitting on the Mars. And yet, sometimes we fail to understand the person sitting right next to us. So this, this kind of paradoxical situation has come up because we often fail to have conversations. And if we can avoid that communication gap, we can avoid these kind of situations when we are just sitting with somebody, and this is how we are basically talking. Here is the phone. Yes, yes, I'm listening. I'm talking to you. Yes, yes, OK, yes. If we can avoid that, then we can have good conversations. The final, the final point I just want to make here is, uh, no matter what you're going to do at individual level, at collective level, a lot of things you're going to achieve, none of it makes sense if you're not able to share it with anyone else. Ask anyone, ask, ask a person, a grown-up person, a person who's been successful, person, people who look up to, how important it is to share things with other people even in relationships, it's not even about career. Even in relationships, husband and wife, if they cannot share things with each other, it doesn't make sense. So, the power of conversations is such that it gives us fulfillment in our careers, in our family life, in our personal life. And if we can share, share not to get likes on social media, but to understand each other, to, to feel loved, to feel connected, and to feel, to understand that we matter in this world. That really gives us a feeling of happiness. And that's essentially what we live for. Thank you very much.